Hey everyone, welcome back to Shitpost Week, where we are having a laugh and talking shit about things. Today, though, we aren't talking shit about things. We are actually asking, well, not asking a question, but proclaiming our superiority as we talk about why utilitarian philosophy is best philosophy. In the same way that North Korea is best Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Um, uh, forgot everything I was gonna say. You do that a lot, lost. You have no oh. lost for words. <clears throat> so, so I'd like to start off shit post week with the concept that utilitarian philosophy is best philosophy because it's the one we subscribe to, and we're both pretty cool dudes. Oh yeah, the coolest of cool. We're so happy, yo. Down with the youth. <laughs> How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually saw a Asian. Uh, 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 God, I've mixed up four words in the same thing right there. Uh, I, I saw a variant of that uh, thing, that, that meme, um, which was uh, above it, it had um, uh, Japan. Um, Japan in need of like male porn stars because there's just so many females that are not males. Um, and then it was uh, replace fellow kids with uh, what was it fellow Japanese people? Yikes! I mean, look, it was a, it was a lot. It was a lot funnier when you saw it. I'll send it to you after this. It's, it's yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just. Hilarious. You have to imagine that what I'm understanding is that an army of Razaramon okay. is this Japanese comedian uh, who also goes by Harduge. <clears throat> He's dressed up like like a gay guy with a leather kink, and it's just <laughs> it's. You got to send me this guy. This sounds freaking hilarious. <clears throat> Yeah. After after this episode, though. So, all right. Why, you know, see, now it was supposed to be shit posting, but now I'm like, but it is the best philosophy, and here's why. <laughs> it's okay. Well, we've like... talked about why communism and fascism are shit philosophies. And I think what we got out of that is that they aren't solutions focused right now. They have a prescribed yeah. worldview in the end where everything will magically solve itself. Yeah. And, um, and I think we yeah, are the they're, opposite they're in both... that respect. Yeah, well, okay. So here's here's actually that's that's giving me a thought. So here's here's the best way to describe it. Ideologies like communism and fascism, by their nature and being ideologies, they describe an end goal and the methodology of how to get there that is very precise. It's like you've got to do these exact things, and none of it's actually factually true, so it all falls apart. That's the problem with ideologies. Political ideologies don't work very well because they're like, here's your end goal, here's how to get there, you know, go have fun, kiddies. But again, they all don't really, like, they're not really, again, like I described last episode, they're not a methodology. That's why utilitarianism is best philosophy because it's not an ideology, it's a, it's a moral philosophy and it's very, it's very much a methodology. The how to do good in the world. It only really has one sentence to it. And that is that an action is most right when it does the greatest amount of good possible for the greatest number of people uh, possible. That's it. It's just like, you know, here's, here's methodology on how to determine what action is most right. Now go and figure out which, which action is that. And that is what's so good about it. You know, it's just a methodology on, on how to figure out what action to take. But we do have an endpoint for society, much like full communism. And that is that a system of government should continually be asking itself that question. How to undertake the series of actions that is most right for the greatest amount of people. Yeah, that's, that's, not, a, that's not an endpoint, though. That's more like a, a running, um, just a running system. Just a running, you know. Again, so is full communism, allegedly. Yeah. We've never actually well, seen it happen, so we have no idea. I mean, he... <clears throat> I mean, yes, sort of, but not really. 
full communism. I mean, look, it's... Look, the idea of communism, albeit beautiful, was never attainable. The idea was that we wouldn't need government, just people who were interested in the day-to-day -day workings of things. Well, people who are interested in the day-to-day -day working of things is government. That is a government. This Again, sounds Karl like Marx you're looking to abolish politics. Well, he, I'm that's not what sure Karl I Marx dislike this. Kind of want to. Okay. okay, here's the thing. You need politics to run things. Otherwise, you can't run things on anything greater than a tribal level. Like at the at the tribal level, everyone is the government because it's that it's small enough for that to work. It, it's direct democracy. But once you get bigger than that, once you involve a couple of tribes, well, you need a you know you have to, even tribes have a council of elders once they get large. Yeah, so we're looking at the transition from direct democracy to representative democracy. Yeah, and that's you know so you need you need a governing force in any society, even if it's just a tribal society, in which case it's direct democracy or a larger, maybe multi-tribal society, in which case it's representative democracy, which is what we have in Australia. Allegedly. Well, allegedly, yes. I mean, look, we do elect representatives, and they are supposed to, and I just stress, supposed to represent our best interests, but I would say that maybe a third of them do it best. Which is, you know... I'm sorry, I'm just appreciating the uh, the Australian Parliament House website... Um, talking about responsible government and representative democracy, saying um, that many countries call themselves dem democratic or republics, but the one thing that is certain is that if a country calls itself a democratic republic, it is neither. I'm just... I, I... <laughs> I mean, why is that on that website? I know, right? Are they just hoping that the various countries that haven't yet decided whether or not to bomb the shit out of us for being allied with the US don't notice? I mean, it's it's not even about that with me. It's just like, is, that's not the place for it, though. No, this is an educational site about, like, the fundamentals of government and the fundamentals of the Westminster system specifically. So I'm not... Yeah, why are we talking about I... other countries in that regard? <laughs> Why because other countries also use point? the system of responsible government. Yeah, yeah, but but why make that like that particular point? Doesn't make any sense in that context. It's it's just out of place. I know, I mean, but it's also funny. I mean, okay, well, maybe maybe it's my weird psychology, but it being just weirdly out of place there. Just, I can't find the humor in it because it's just that weirdly out of place. Does that make any sense? Yeah, but it's also funny to me. Uh, but All right. well, Maybe, yeah, the representative government is also weird because the corrupting influence of money means that our representatives end up representing who's paying them and not us. But that's just you know. Yes. Well, <laughs> see that's you know. See, here's the thing. You know, communism would be like, you know, it's it's all the, it's all, I mean, look, in this case, in that regard, it kind of is rich people's fault, but not, you know, particularly all rich people, just those who donate to politicians, which happens to be the vast majority of them. Yeah. That being said, I should probably specify that, you know, rich in that regard is like... Obscenely 500, rich. Yeah, like 500 million in the bank or that kind of rich. If you have a hundred million in the bank, you're obscenely rich. That's more money than you can use. Well, I'm not just talking personal account. I'm also talking, talking like in their business. You know, if their business mm. is worth five hundred million <clears throat> or more, then you know, then they're obscenely rich. And so that's the that's the kind of person that the overwhelming majority, close, you know, something approaching one hundred percent, is you know, they're all donating to politicians to get what they want. I wish I was rich enough to donate to politicians to get what I want. I was if, look, if I was rich enough to do that, I would just run myself and you know pay my entire campaign. And uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, I've just got distracted now with like just the image of 
me being able to do that. That would make things a whole lot easier. But see, that's that's the that's the problem with um with people who want to change things. Usually, they're essentially the have-nots. The people who see the injustice in society are usually those who have experienced it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, usually in being the people who have experienced it, they don't have the resources to change it immediately. But, you know, that's why, that's why as we've said in previous episodes, we need a, a new power base in Australia made up of a ton of people. You know, everyone in everyone in Australia can give ten bucks. You know, if, if if everyone if like if if we had two million people give ten bucks each, that's twenty million. That's enough to win an election. Theoretically, like, outright, yes. Outright win. Well, I mean, if you if you if you're intelligent with it and you have really good policies and you actually know what you do. But again, it sounds kind of like you're going for fascism here. Well, that's because fascism is so freaking nebulous. Like as a as a concept again, the textbook definition you quoted last episode was just a united nation under a under a popular leader, uh, a charismatic, again, a charismatic leader. You know, that's I mean that that could be any nation. That could that again that was Australia at least two or three times in the past. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no real like there's no distinction there. You know, that's, I think that's why people have tried to add things onto it. Like, you know, they also want an ethno state. But the original, the original um, definition, I just don't think works. Maybe it did back when it was created, but honestly, a United Nation under a charismatic leader doesn't sound too bad. You know, and, and it's so, like, it's, it's too broad. You know, what is, what does it mean to have an actual fascist ideology? You know, is it like what 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 fits within fascism that can be added to that definition to actually you know distinguish it between something else that just happens to also in, include a charismatic leader and a united nation? Like I'm sorry, I just hey. had the mental image of Pauline Hanson. Not gonna lie, I, I did as well. It's just but she's not exactly popular. Um, not oh, exactly but she is charismatic. Oh no. You think she's charismatic? She just comes across to me like a complete and not a moron who's just stuttering over her words. <clears throat> yeah, but charisma isn't elocution. It's a lot of things. It is a certain je ne sais quoi. What what charisma? It's was. enough Australians having a kink for a redhead who won't shut up. I mean, look, the redhead part I can get, but like, won't shut up. I mean, please with, with... explain. Okay, you got that. Ah. <laughs> uh. All right, you, you kind of got me in that regard. She 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 can be unintentionally hilarious. Yeah, kind of like Trump, actually, unintentionally hilarious. Just so so stupid that they end up being absolutely hilarious. Yep. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just. I also saw recently a uh, Jackie Lambie, um, in what I think was Senate estimates, going one of the defense head honchos. Jackie Lambie. Okay, let's talk about Jackie Lambie for a second. Let's talk actually, about Jackie Lambie. She's actually a little bit interesting. I she is. She is she an every woman. She has the potential to be as charismatic leader, um, not by any force of will or elocution, but simply by being a figure with whom the public can resonate. Okay, de define elocution. <clears throat> what is that word? I've never heard of it. Before. It's when you speak like a fancy bitch who has been tutored from birth. To speak like a fancy bitch. Okay. So eloquence. Mm-hmm. Um eloquent. Okay. So <clears throat> Okay, so I I think she's I find her kind of interesting because 
although she has never, how do I put it? She hasn't always been the most informed. She hasn't always been the most, um, the most uh, knowledgeable person. <laughs> However, she strikes me as actually reasonably intelligent or even more than reasonably intelligent because she not only is willing to, but has learned. And mm -hmm. the, 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 longer, the longer we go on, the better she's gotten when it comes to policy and politics. And that I very much can respect. The, the continual self-improvement and professional improvement that I've witnessed with Jackie Lambie has been actually even kind of inspiring. You know, someone who, who I wouldn't have thought anything of a decade ago has become much, much more improved. And combine that with, with how much she genuinely cares, just that authentic caring, that, that authentic, you know, the, the fact that she gives a shit, you know, that very much resonates with me. That's that's kind of it. That's that's all, all I was going to say with that. Yeah, I well, this is what I mean about her having the potential to be a charismatic leader. <clears throat> One nation, indivisible, united under Jackie Lambie. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine. Um, to be honest, I don't think that'd be that bad, actually. <laughs> I think, like, I don't, I don't know if she, she has a strong she... moral core. She yeah. learns from failure and success alike. Look, it. I, if if we could know that Miss Lambie could be counted upon to be incorruptible. And I think she has already demonstrated a strong tendency in that vein. I think her, she is I've the sort of person who could make a very good prime minister. Yeah, I've seen her speak on corruption. She's like ten years ago. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have told you she'd make a great prime minister. But with her continual growth, improvement, both personally and professionally, and seeing how like she's railed against corruption in Senate in the Senate before, she. She's how do I put it? You know, I, I I'm trying to think of a historical figure that I can I can reference, but I don't know if I can if if there is anyone quite like her. Started out very almost one note, even, you know, or not even one note, just like there wasn't really much there, but very much grew, very much learned, very much improved. And, you know, over time, just through practice, has done better and better for, for her electorates, her communities, and the nation. Isn't that a sort of approaching utilitarianism as a concept? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very, you know, I, I was thinking the same thing, sort of in different words, though. But very much like that's the kind of representative you want. Yeah. You know, absolutely. someone like at, at their at their core, they give a shit about people and they really they really want to do good. Yeah. And they may they they may not be perfect, but they're they're very much willing to learn and improve. That is that is utilitarianism at its finest, if I've ever seen it. Yeah. Should we just endorse Jackie Lambie? I think we just did. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. JL4P, Jackie Lambie for Prime Minister. Or it should, could be JL4PM. Yeah, JL for PM. We need to get another letter on there so that we can have Jackie Lambie have, like, a radio handle. JL4PM. That's no, another know. letter. Uh, um, Australian radio call signs are six characters. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> What's her middle name? 
I don't know. Okay, whatever it is, just add that in there between the. We'll figure it out. We gotta. We'll figure it out. (laughs) Anyway, we have run out of time, so you know. I think actually, I think in a way, we ended up proving why why util like like we why utilitarian philosophy is best philosophy. Just yeah, because we've just been able to look at someone else and go, "Oh shit, she'd be a great prime minister." Yeah, and she's very utilitarian in her actions, and very and and to. You know, it's basically all like utilitarianism is basically about finding the best right thing. You know, doing mm-hmm. the next right thing, and that's what Jackie Lambie does, and she's done pretty well. Yeah, pretty well for Australia. So, anyway, with that in very inspiring note, we will leave you all and uh, say, have a great day, Jackie Lambie. We love you.